Hey everyone! Hi besties! Today I'm going to be talking about something that is so crucial and important especially if you're looking into starting your solo set gig performances. Welcome to Unleash Your Sound, the ultimate electric cellist gig setup guide. Are you ready for it? Because we're ready to jump right in. If you're looking into starting your performance career or getting into the gig scenes, then you're probably looking into getting your setup. And there's nothing more important than getting the solid setup for your gig. That way you get repeat gigs and you're able to grow from this. So let's get you all set up here. In this video, I will be guiding you through four different topics. Through first topic, tables needed for seamless performance choosing the right PA systems or your speaker. Three, in-ear monitoring system demystified. Four, earphone option for optimal sound. So if these sound like something that you've been curious about and want to learn more about it, keep on watching the video. Now let's talk all cables why it's essential to have good cables. You know when you are out at a concert or a venue where there's live music, sometimes you hear those like feed noises like kind of like when you used to put your old cell phone near like a charger, then it will create these weird frequencies. So it's, okay, that is a distinction between a good cable versus cheapy cables. So we're going to talk more about that. There are so many different types of cables and, and brands and they incorporate different technology of rubber and metal and other things to uh, give us really good good sound. Another topic we're going to be discussing in-ear monitoring system and we're going to demystify the heck out of this because this was a very intimidating topic, at least for me. Well, I didn't even realize that I would need to get in-ear monitoring, nor did I even know this thing existed. When I started to do more gigs and I realized that my sound and my setup projected and reverb vastly different in each venue or location I played at. And sometimes I struggle with hearing my own self because my speaker was facing the audience. I couldn't hear my instrument sound or the tra backing track because sometimes it's too loud and I can't last in to hear myself. And it was a challenging balance. Whatever I could hear was actually a delay. So I am taking the cue from the reverb and there's latency involved. So how accurate is my rhythm and how intertwined are my sounds? So that's when I realized I needed to figure out a solution so that I can bring the same quality performance every venue, every location. I could actually hear what I'm doing, I could mix and fix my sound as I go. So you know how if you're a producer or musician that are studio engineers, they focus a lot on mastering and balancing the sound. That's what they're really great at and they do that with software's tool. That's amazing. As live performers and instrumentalists, when it comes to music, we are doing that as we go live, relying just on our ears. So I cannot emphasize more on how crucially important it is because your ears are your best asset. What you're reacting to is going to determine how well you will play. Make sure that you are looking into options live wedge. That's another monitoring system option that people prefer. I was not a huge fan of wedge monitor because I didn't want a floor wedge. I wanted to hear it immediately. Even though that could have worked out with my setup, it was also bulkier than an in-ear monitoring system. So I went with Shure PSM 300 in-ear personal monitoring system systems with a personal body pack, P3RA, comes with this ginormous transmitter, it's not that bad actually, these sure earphones, they are actually sold all separately too, but you can also buy this whole pack together, totally up to you. I ended up buying this whole pack and decided to opt out for a different earphone. That's the topic we're going to be talking about as our closure. After we've established one cable that goes from your instrument to your speaker, we're going to have to break it up. You're going to have to squeeze the system okay so you're gonna have to connect another in and out and add this on your sound will go in your sound will come out to the speaker and it'll project this is a wireless body pack that stays with you and you can listen to everything in time with no latency and the cool thing about this can be so easy to set up sometimes I just put it on the floor sometimes I put it on top of the bar if I'm at a restaurant I've even put it on a coffee table across from where I'm playing however I do realize that that people are walking around with their cell phones, it does have some interfering. The feed noises and those things, notice that happen. So I prefer to keep it close to me 
And you'll be able to work even if it's side by side. So this connects to your earphone and you put these on top of your earlobes. You have easy access to them. This is my favorite setup that I recommend if you are starting out as an electric cellist, as an electric violinist, electric violist, or even a bassist. Last topic, earphone options for optimal sound. When I began looking to search for earphones and studio ear monitors and studio headphones, I was so overwhelmed. It's kind of like mom telling you, okay, we can get you new shoes. So you're like, yay. You go to the shoe store and you realize there are tennis shoes, there are slide-ons, there are athletic shoes, there are running shoes, there are light-up shoes, there are rain boots, there are snow boots, fur boots, and you're just like, oh my gosh. This is how I felt about your phone. So if you feel this way also, then you're probably in the right place. So when it comes to in-ear monitoring system earphones, there are two different types. There are custom made and there are universal fit earphones. You have to kind of work in those realms, but I will make it really easy to start off for you. Custom earphones start at $900 and above. And everything else under that price range, you can find them in Universal Fit earphones. And I actually love Shure. I've had many of their mics. There's only one mic that broke down and I actually didn't love, but all of their products have really impressed me and I continue to use Shure items. And when you go to Shure accessories, you will be overwhelmed by the information different earphones. I decided to go with the top of the line earphones instead of making a custom mold because it, that was just very overwhelming. I started to do research on the market and this is what I found to be the top line headphones isolating in-ear monitoring earphones in the market as of recent few years. These are SE846 sound isolating earphones and mine is specifically Gen 2. They come in this really nice box. This is what I typically travel with and they look pretty identical to the other earphones that were 200 something dollars. They're pretty identical. So what is the big difference? I want to talk quickly about the difference between what makes the earphones expensive versus not expensive, but they look really cute either way. And you're like, number of drivers inside your earphones or headphones is the biggest factor that determines its price and its quality. I did not know that because I go to stores and there's so many cute earphones and they are very nice and good quality on the outside, very sturdy, but the prices were vastly different and I couldn't understand why they were so expensive, professional earphones versus the stuff that I got from Amazon, so cheap and they're just as cute and a nice quality product because of the number of drivers. If you are a musician, I'll break it down to you so it's easiest to understand for those people who think ensemble orchestra. You know how in an orchestra or in a large ensemble such as choir, we have bass, tenor, alto, treble, and we want to make sure that we are a very good blend of all of these sounds, right? But you don't want the basses playing violin parts in the octave because one, they don't have the octave in the range. Two, like, I don't think I'd want to hear that. Or do you want to have the violinist play their lowest register and expect to have the same sound and the gravity that cello section would be able to provide in our specific tone range? So what I'm trying to tell you is usually a lot of cheap earphones, they have just one driver, okay? There is one driver that is trying to receive and put out the frequencies and the sound for the bass section, for the viola section, for the, the violin, for the trumpet, and it's overworking, it's compromised. Versus if you're using earphones with two different drivers, maybe they have a high and low separate driver. So you're still getting the really good lows, treble, aka, or the bass, and there's a really healthy mix, and you can turn them up and down separately, control them. That means they have two drivers. Anything beyond two drivers goes to three and four drivers and that's where the pricing gets drastically different. And the reason why this one is very expensive and this is why like musicians are obsessed with sure mic, SC846 sound isolating earphones. They have four custom engineered drivers tailored to blend precisely. This is what's going to help you decide which earphones that you should choose. How picky you are and how much you need to really hear. If you're just playing basic uh, piano accompaniment and your instrument music, honestly, even a two driver, I feel like that would be plenty. But if you're mixing strings, if you're mixing electric cello, you're mixing live chorus, you're mixing jazz and other brass and winds, and I'm having to 
project my sound and perform to that level. I want to be able to hear each and every section so I can better balance myself and control my volume and sound from my end. But if you have been a skilled live musician, you start to become very nitpicky about your sound and discover this crazy realm where you are watching hours and hours of YouTube on audio earphone comparison on many drivers. So the conclusion is, it is so totally unique to you and your situation and your budget to figure out which earphones are going to be most suitable for you. They range anywhere from $200 to $1,000. I think that's where I would stay. If you have a baller budget and you have means to spend thousands of dollars on the earphones, I recommend getting a custom one. That's so cool. So we talked about four really important topics and by now you should feel really comfortable about understanding your cable needs, understanding your PA system or sound speakers for your sound, how to hear yourself and mix and balance your live sound using in-ear monitoring system. And lastly, we talked about all the options we got going on for the earphones for those sophisticated, classically trained ears of ours. I hope this helps you understand exactly what you want to do for your next gig setup and if you have any questions drop them in the comments and i'd love to hear good luck with all of your gig preparation endeavors i cannot wait for you to start killing it and start unlocking five six figure gigs easily see you next time music career bestie out